Yes. Good morning. Today we will discuss about the dynamics of a synchronous machine. Before this studying of dynamics of synchronous machine, in the last class we have studied what is power system stability, overview of the power system stability, and the brief history of the power system stability, and the different types of the power system stability like row triangle stability, voltage voltage stability, frequency stability. And under row triangle stability, we have seen different classification and frequency stability, we have seen different classification. So now we will study about the dynamics of a synchronous machine. Usually the swing equation describes the dynamics of a synchronous machine. So to derive the swing, swing equation, we require inertia constant. So basically what is this inertia constant? So inertia constant and the angular momentum play an important role in determining the transient stability of the machine. Usually the transient stability means it's a large disturbance which will occur in the road which will come under the rotor angle stability. Now the per unit inertia constant H in megajoules per MVA this I will explain in further derivation which is defined as the kinetic energy stored in rotating parts of the machine at synchronous speed per MVA rating of the machine. Here we are using, we are taking synchronous speed, the mechanical synchronous speed. Now, rotor kinetic energy at synchronous, rotor kinetic energy at synchronous speed is given by K equals to of J omega s means it is synchronous mechanical into 10 raised to minus 6 because I will express this in megajoules. So because of that I use here 10 raised to minus 6. Then this how this equation had been derived you can go to that Kimbar book that is very book for your purpose it is not required just kinetic energy stored is of j into omega s omega s is my mechanical synchronous speed into 10 raised to minus 6 megajoules now what is j j is moment of j is moment of inertia of ro rotor in some books here instead of j they had been given i no issue j is moment of inertia of rotor it is kg square meter so omega s mech it is synchronous speed in mechanical so which is given in radian per second so how to convert this into electrical we have studied about the basic equation theta e equals to p by theta m that means theta electrical can be found out by p by 2 into theta m where theta m is mechanical degree theta is electrical degree p is number of poles in similar way here also in instead of theta there had been we will say omega s so omega s electrical equals to p by 2 omega s mechanical this is my equation number 2 so this is rotor speed in electrical radian per second. Now where P as I said P is number of poles of a machine. Now from equation 1 from this equation and from this equation equation 2 from this equation. So we can get from equation 1 and 2 we can get. So instead of omega s mechanical I will use this equation I want in electrical so ke equals to of j 2 by p omega s electrical what we did here yes so this we have substituted in terms of so if this gone if my denominator goes to here it becomes numerator and 2 by p so WSM equals to WS electrical into 2 by P. So the same thing here we got. So into WS electrical. 
So now I will take the whole term this as an this term I will take it is an j. This term I will take as a j. So sorry, I will take it is a m, not j. I will take it is an m. What is m? I will explain. Now k e equals to half m omega s electrical. Let us say this is equation number three. Now, so m is my j into two by p square w s electrical into ten raised to minus six. This equation. So what is m here? Moment of inertia in mega joules per electrical radian. How that mega joules? I will explain you. Now we shall define the inertia constant h such that g h equals to k e of m omega s electrical mega joules. Right? Now inertia constant. Now, so what is g h? What is g? It is a three phase m v a rating of the machine. That means it is a base. m v a rating of the machine h is inertia constant in mega joules per m v a or megawatt second per m v a or second so how it is mega joules per m v a or megawatt per second that i will explain now let us see here my omega equals to joules per uh, uh, sorry Watt, it's not omega. Watt equals to joule per second. Now J equals to omega second. Now if I want in larger quantity, it is mega joules equals to mega watt second. Now if you divide mega watt by MVA, then you will get m. Mega watt by MVA, it is a dimensionless less, dimensionless, so it will be one, so it remains second only. So the same he had been given here. So mega joules per second, so electrical radian. So m equals to so with this equation, yes. Now we can see from this equation, m I will get. If two gets here, two G H by omega is electrical. So the same thing from equation five, we can write that M equals to two G H omega is electrical. So two G H by two pi F. This is omega S is in electrical two pi E F. It I will I required in electrical form. So two and This two and this two get cancelled. Now what will we get? M equals to G H by pi F. This is mega joules per second electrical. So mega joules second per electrical radian. So here we have derived. Now if I want to in degree, so instead of pi, you make it is in you know, pi equals to one eighty. So you will get M equals to G H one eighty. If mega joules second per electrical degree. Let us say this is equation number seven. This is equation number six. Now m is also called inertia constant, whereas like h m is also called as inertia constant. Now assuming g as base, the inertia constant in per unit is given. Assuming G S base. That means my base power. What is my per unit power? Actual power by base power. So G as my base power. So M equals to the sort I written M equals to G H by pi F. So divide M by both sides. It's not divide M by both side. It is divide by G by both sides. So it is base M V A. Basically, it is a three phase base M V A. Divide G by both sides. 
So m by j, m is my actual and g is my base. So you will be, you can return, you can write as m by g is my m per unit. So g is my base and m is my actual. So I can write m per unit. So here h by pi f. So g and g will get cancelled. So h by pi f. So second square per electrical, this unit is written as second square per electrical radian. How this second square per electrical radian? We will see. Yes. So when we divide by g, g is nothing but three phase MVA rating as I said. So here what is my MW? It is nothing but here one minute. Clearly, I will explain. Yes, see here Mj is nothing but Mw second. So, this we have where this Mj second is equals to Mw second, where we will go from here. Mj equals to this from this, we will get Mw second. Now, Mj equals to M second. Now put this equation, put this in this form, you will get MW by MVA into second square. So here, so where is MVA? MVA is nothing but by G. It is in three phase uh, base MVA. So now MVA, sec, already it is MJ second square. Now I place this MW second. Now MW second square per electrical radian. Now, when you divide by G, so G is nothing but my base MVA. So, MW by MVA, it is a dimensionless quantity. So, only you will get second square electrical per radian. MPU, M per unit will be given H by pi of, so second square per electrical radian. So, this, how we got the second square per electrical radian? Usually we have m equals to g h by pi f. So when we divide by g on both sides, so this is m by g will get m p u and h by pi f. What is g it means? It is my base m v a. So m j per second is how derived here. It is nothing but m w second. This m w second. So now I place MW second electrical radian. Now this equation I place here MJ second. Yes, I place here MJ second. Now you will get it is MW second square per electrical degree, electrical radian if I place here. If I place here it becomes degree, if I place here it becomes radian. No. So, MPU equals to H by 180 F second square per electrical degree that is your equation number 9. Now, coming to the swing equation. So, the basically the swing equation describes your the dynamics of uh, synchronous machine. Now, let us consider generator and motor. So, this is very important. Let us give the example for generator. Let us derive for the generator, synchronous generator. Now, see this is my mechanical input power and this is my generator and this is my electrical. You see the direction is here that my mechanical torque and my direction of the shaft, rotation of the shaft will be in the same direction. So, that means my TM drives my shaft in the direction of in the direction of rotation of generator that is in the direction of shaft rotation where this tm gets through the prime mover so prime mover is generally a or turbine either it may be in a idle small idle or it may be a steam so basically what i mean to say is my mechanical torque or input mechanical torque drives the 
a shaft torque in the direction of the rotation of the generator. Now this at the same time by opposing this is torque due to this mechanical torque and electromagnetic torque will set. So this electromagnetic torque or electrical torque will set in opposite direction. So that is when you go to the motor it is opposite. So here my mechanical torque drives the shaft torque due to this in reaction my electrical torque will be developed in the opposite direction. That means my Tm is my driving force and my Te is opposing force or controlling force. Now the same he had been given. Consider a synchronous generator develop an electromagnetic torque and corresponding electromagnetic power while operating at synchronous speed. We will considering here the generator is rotating at synchronous speed assuming that all losses are negligible. Winding, friction and iron loss torque is negligible. So all the losses we are considered it is negligible. Now if the input torque provided by the prime mover at the generator shaft then under steady state condition without any disturbance T equals to Ta. That means when losses are neglected I will consider my driving force is equal to the opposing force or controlling force in the sense my generator my shaft rotating at constant speed. Do not think that both are driving force and opposing force are equal means the shaft will not be rest in the sense the shaft is rotating at constant speed. Now let us assume that if my input power is more, if my mechanical torque is more then my then when you compare with the electrical torque my mechanical torque will be more means if Tm if Tm is greater than my Te means then your alpha that is difference in that will be of positive. When it will be positive? When my input power will be greater than the my opposing force. That means my driving force should be greater than my opposing force. That is the time my alpha will be positive. If my opposing force will be greater than driving force then my alpha will be negative. So usually this if positive means the shaft accelerates and if it is negative means the shaft deaccelerates. So when my mechanical torque will be greater than the when my drive sorry when my driving force will be greater than the opposing force then my generator speed increases shaft speed increases that is accelerating. When my electrical torque or electromagnetic torque is greater than the mechanical torque that means when my opposing force or controlling force is greater than the driving force then your shaft going to decelerate. So the same he had been given. Under steady state condition without any disturbance T equals to Tm that means my generating is my generator is rotating at constant speed shaft is rotating at constant speed. Now therefore we have T into Ws multiply omega in both the sides. So T into omega s and Tm equals to omega s. Tm into T omega s equals to Tm omega s that means output power equals to input. So what is P? It is torque into omega. Then so you can see Tm omega s minus Te omega s 
equals to mechanical power minus electrical power equals to 0. Let us consider this is an equation 12. If there is a departure from steady state of course, either your shaft going to accelerate, your generator shaft going to accelerate or generator shaft going to deaccelerate. When it is going to accelerate, when your mechanical power, when your driving force will be greater than your opposing force. At that time it accelerates. When it deaccelerates, de when your driving force will be lesser than the opposing force or controlling force. Here, for example, a change in load or a fault, the input power is not equal to the my output power. That means my whenever my there is a change in load or a fault, the input power is not equal to the is not equal to the my electrical power. That means my mechanical power is not equal to the electrical power. Therefore, the left side of the equation 12, this equation will not be 0. So, this varies and an accelerating torque comes into the play. So, when accelerating torque comes into the play, when my input power is more, when my driving force is more than my, when driving force is more than controlling force or opposing force. If PA is the corresponding accelerating or deaccelerating power then, so this here had been given PA. So, PM minus PE means it is an accelerating force. So, he had been given that M equal P m minus P e equals to m into d square theta e d t square by d t square plus d d d theta e by d t, it which is equals to the my P a accelerating power. So this m is defined in equation eight and nine. Now where is equation eight and nine? Yes, m is they are in equation 8 and 9. You can see m p u equals to h by pi f and if you want in degree it is m p u equals to h by 180 p f. This, this is my equation 9. Now, D is damping coefficient, theta is electrical angular position of the rotor. This I will explain. See here theta E and here let us say reference rotor axis and this is theta. Consider only this two. Now consider only this two. Now consider that only the two. Consider this and this. What will happen if rotor, if reference rotor axis kept stationary, if I kept this stationary, if I kept this stationary and this my rotor is always, my theta, my rotor field is always rotating like 1 360 degree. This is reference, it comes 1, one cycle, 2 cycle, 3 cycle like that. We do not know whether where this, uh, whether the, it is rotating at the synchronous speed or not. So, the problem can be solved by taking what I will do is I will move this reference rotor axis along with this. Now, take this one more equation like do here, here no space, so here space is there take this like this, this is my stationary, now yes, initially this is my stationary, this is my reference axis and this is my 
this is my theta theta now this is my rotor field field rotor field now if i make this if i make r as a constant so my this will continuously rotating so this is continuously rotating 360 degree so when it comes to here one one cycle and again it continuously rotating now we cannot judge exact how where the synchronous speed so what we will do is instead of that keeping reference as a stationary we move both simultaneously so here r and this is rotor field instead of theta what i will do take it is an angle like this wait now see this yes now what i will do yes now let's see it's a delta now what i will do is my both the uh, phases will move if there is if the, if the, it is rotating in synchronous speed both way if both will be rotating at synchronous speed my delta will be constant if there is a change in the synchronous speed if there is any change if the either it will be increase or decrease in change, synchronous speed my delta will going to change either delta will increase or delta will decrease so my if it is delta if it is constant my generator is running at synchronous speed the same thing you had been given when you delta equals to theta e the entire this minus my ws reference rotating axis that is in mechanical remember that into t now when we double differentiate with the above equation you will get d square delta by dt square d square theta e by dt square now so finally you will get d square delta by dt square equals to d square theta e dt square just interchange this is my equation 15 now where this is delta e is the power angle of the synchronous machine or it is also called as torque angle in some books they will be given it is an torque angle so my delta is the power angle of the synchronous machine if it is constant then it is rotating at synchronous generator is rotating at synchronous speed neglecting damping torque that is d equals to 0 we will not consider damping torque and substitute equation 15 this equation 15 in equation 13 now where is the equation 13 so this is equation 13 and, and consider this is in zero so if it is in zero the entire term goes to zero here now so pm minus yes we will get m d square by delta or d square delta by dt square equals to pm minus p now using equation 16 and 6 there is six equation yes this is equation 6 so had been given m equals to gh by pi of electrical that is mega joule second per electrical radian using 16th equation yes 16 equation this is now using both the equation we will get instead of placing m here we will be place gh by pi of in the in m place we will use in m place we will use gh by pi of d square delta by dt square equals to pm minus pe megawatt dividing throughout by g with the mva rating of the machine so what you will get dividing throughout g the mva rating of the machine so here if i divide with by g you will get mpu So d square by delta d t square p i this is p m in some books they had been given it is input power 
So in Nagrath and Kotari, they had been taken only PEM. So PEM minus PE PU. So when this is my actual power, this is my actual power. If I divide by G, that means G is my base three phase MVA rating. Now it will become PU here also. Now what is MPU means my H by pi. MPU is my, nothing but my H by pi of. So MPU is H by pi of. This is equation number nineteen. Now, or this can be written as H by pi of d square by delta equals to PM minus P. So H by P of d square delta by dt square PM minus P. This is my swing equation. So this. It describes the swing equation. Describes the rotor dynamics for a synchronous machine. It is also used for the in analysis of transient stability and for the second order equation. So thank you. In next class, based on this, we will solve simple problems. So please free to ask the doubts. Thank you once again.